Sorry about that, folks. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to walk you through the process, one of the workshops that we do. It's going to be a, a sort of a smaller version of the workshops. We usually take two hours, but we're going to try to get through it in 50 minutes. Uh, the great thing is that um, it's all in GitHub. You can do it at your own pace uh, at a later time, but let's go ahead and get started. So um, I don't know if you saw my last talk. I was talking about um, uh, what Datastax does, and one of the things that we do is we create um, uh, Cassandra hosted instances in the cloud, so uh, database as a service. Um, the uh, GitHub repository, let me see if I can um, get that over for you. Um, uh, that's, that'll work. Um, that's the repository that you're going to work from. So let's take a look and see what we're going to do. Um, you do need in order to make this work. And if this stuff doesn't work for you now, it's fine. You can come back and do it later. Just watch. Um, I'll probably go pretty quickly to get through everything. But um, you do need a GitHub account. Um, we'll create Netlify and AstroDB accounts. Um, and you're going to need to use Chrome or Firefox because Gitpod does not work on Safari or Edge. So we're going to create a Jamstack um, application. This application is going to be serverless. Um, we're not actually going to have a server. What Netlify is, it's a, it's a, um, it's a uh, CDN, but they also have, make it possible for you to put functions, serverless functions. Like they're just basically Lambda functions from AWS. So you can cram all that into your code. Um, in, and uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to deploy to Netlify because that does take a little bit of time. So what it is doing is it's creating a copy of the repository that I was in. So the, the one that I click the, that I, I posted in the chat. Um, oh, can you see can you see my screen? I'm probably not even sharing it. My, I'm so sorry. Um, nope. How do I share my screen? Uh, yes, there we go. Okay, so hmm, that's a big mess. Um, but it wants the whole thing. All right. Well, that's what we'll do. There we go. Um, all right, so let's go back. Um, so again, I started at the GitHub repository that, that I pasted in the chat, and then I clicked on deploy to Netlify. And um, we try to let you know kind of what's happening because we do some magic here, right? So the Netlify deploy button creates a new repository by cloning this workspace, creates a site on Netlify, and then links the two together. Um, this is usually a lot of steps and super nice that um, that they make it so easy at Netlify. So we're going to call this um, live. And you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. But um, the, what's going to happen now is it's created a GitHub repository. Um, you can see I got the the um, notification up there that says that um, I got a new key. Um, but what it's going to do is it's going to build your site to make sure that it's good. And once it builds successfully on Netlify, then Netlify deploys the code. So that means that if we want to do anything with it, we're going to need to wait until it's done deploying. So this probably looks very familiar. It is a, it's an NPM um, a repository. Um, it's, it's, in, it, it's built things. Um, and um, so it's going to do this for a little while. I'm going to leave this Netlify uh, tab up and we're going to uh, continue on. So let me get back to the GitHub repository. That's good. No, not that one. Oh, that's fine. All right, good. All right. The next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to log in or register to AstroDB and create a database. 
If you already have an Astra login, you can actually skip this step because we're going to create the database for you a little bit later, just in case you didn't get the names right. Um, it works better if, if we use the same um, database names and key spaces for things. But if you click on this, it will take you to Astra. And you can register uh, or, or you can log in if you already have an account. And once you're in there, uh, you'll get to the dashboard. A little bit about Astra in case you weren't in my last talk. Um, when you create a database, um, which is automatically happens when you first register, but um, you can do just what I did, click that blue button, um, it says, current plan free tier up to $25 a month, then pay as you go. Um, that can be confusing. Let me just assure you that we're not going to take your credit card. Um, the free tier up to $25 a month, I mean, what does that even mean? It's, you know, people can blow that in 20 seconds on AWS, depending on what they're doing. But what that means is that you get 40 million reads, 5 million writes, and 40 gigabytes of storage per month. So you're in good shape if you're, you can even run a small business on it. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of storage. So um, you see you can select uh, whichever provider you want and then the region for that provider, just pick one that's close to you um, and that'll um, keep your latency down. Um, and so I'm not going to create the database because I am going to we're going to do it in a in another way. So uh, let's see how our Netlify deploy is going. So it looks like it's done. You can scroll down on the Netlify deploy, see all the things that happen, um, and then it's pushed it to the repository. So that's cool. Let's uh, let's go there and see what it is. Ah, well, let's try HTTPS and not a cold. The other way to get here, which is smarter, is to use the link and that's in Netlify, but you can get here either way. So you can see it did create Interface TikTok Live as I asked it to. And um, so we have deployed to Netlify. Uh, didn't need to create the DB, but we do have to have the login. And um, we verified that the site has been built, right? It says deploy um, to, net, uh, to GitHub. And then um, this is Safari, so that's not going to work. So this is the point at which it's important to have the Chrome browser uh, because what we're going to use a, a, a in browser IDE that's really groovy that um, that that GitHub creates uh, called GitPod, but this does not work at all um, on Safari. It does work on Firefox if, if that's your um, thing. So let's see if it uh, it was having some trouble earlier today. Hopefully not anymore. But I do have Firefox to try if I need to. All right, so isn't this great? Like this is a repository. I can play with these things and I have this cool terminal down here so I can run things. So I didn't have to bring it to my system. I I made sure that this image um, had the right version of Node and NPM and, and worked correctly for the code so that, that we get all of that out of the way for you. It is totally possible to do this um, with a local install, it's it's fine for you to, um, you know, go through the Netlify step and then and then clone your new repository back to your system and do the work there. Um, it's completely up to you. But we just, you know, sometimes people have Windows, sometimes they have Macs, they have Linux, they have some special version of N npm that they need because of something else that they're doing. Um, so that's why we. Have this. Um, 
and let me uh, come back. Um, are you guys, can you guys see this or do I need to make it bigger? This bigger? I'll make it bigger. I know I always want to be able to see stuff. All right. So here we are. Let's go back to here. So I, I launched Gitpod, right? So click, click here to launch Gitpod, did that. Um, now I'm gonna install the Netlify CLI. Um, so that means that I'll be able to do work here that will affect, yes, allow. All right, so th this means that I'm gonna be able to work with that site. So uh, if you think about it, um, the Netlify version of your application is your site, and that's actually uh, live to the, to, the, to the world. So once we get all of our um, environment variables set up, um, then you'll be able to see what the actual um, application looks like in the web. You can, you know, share um, share it with people and, and do magic things, but it's all serverless. There's no, there's no place that it is. Okay. So, um, we installed the Netlify CLI. Now we're going to run, um, Astra setup and Astra setup is, um, if you were in my last, um, presentation, you probably noticed that I had to do some sort of annoying things in order to get the credentials done. Um, I streamlined it a lot before I created this one. So um, in the Astra, I, it, you go to Astra, which is where I showed you, I you create a database. And then in the drop down, you select organization settings, select token management, make a database administrator token. And um, if you save a CSV, it will look like this. Um, I highly recommend it because just like with almost everyone else that gives you token, um, gives you tokens these days, um, you don't ever get to see them again. They're, they're gone as soon as you leave the page. So, um, okay, so what, it, what I told it to do was um, to, oh, Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Um, what I told it to do was create um, a database called TikTok Workshop DB and a key space called TikTok Key Space. So it went and looked, do I need to make one? Oh, actually, there's already a, a, a database with that name. Okay, and then I need a key space. Oh, but it's already there. So. It was basically a no-op, except that it created a .emv file that has all that information in it so that when I'm using my code, it will know what to do. Um, one thing you might wonder is, well, I see that file. I don't think you're gonna check that file in because that would be a really bad idea. How, how is Netlify gonna know what those variables should be? Well. Netlify actually has a way for us to um, for us to do that, and I will show you that in a moment. But first, we're going to run it, and we're going to run it locally. So, of course, it's kind of locally, right? Because you're in Gitpod, so you're locally running it on Gitpod. Now you see here it saw I had um, environment variable uh, variables in my .env file and it put it there. So it, it knows what it's doing. Um, so there it is. All right. So it spawned it. This is, this is actually running on my git pod. Um, let's get rid of this and let's make this smaller. So here we got suggested accounts. We have, you know, top accounts. We have videos in the middle. Um, there's ways to up, up, update, but um, it's working, right? We, we just pulled stuff out of the database. That's awesome. But it's only a limited use, right? Because you want to share it with all your friends. You want to see what videos they're going to send. Um, 
So I'm going to hit control C, control C, and um, then I'm going to finish connecting my site. Again, that's the Netlify site out in the cloud with my workspace. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to Netlify login. And I don't know if it's going to work or not. No. All right. Well, let's. Uh, that one you're going to have to copy and paste because um, browser launching doesn't work in um, IDEs like that. Sort of. But um, so uh, I went to another browser, I went to this ticket, and it noticed that I had actually um, authorized. So we're good. Great. So next. I'm going to do Netlify link. So right now we have a workspace here and we have a GitHub repository and we have a Netlify site, but my, my, um, my workspace doesn't know about the Netlify site. So I'm going to link it and it says, well, do you want to use the same remote origin you have here? That seems good. Let's do that. All right. So now I have Stoic Nuth uh, F74DA2. And um, here's that this, this trick, which is great. So now that we've linked up and, and, and my workspace understands the site where it's where, where the Netlify site information, I can actually upload those EMV file, uh, EMV variables from the .emv file onto Netlify. So let's um, let's look and let's go back to Netlify. All right, so we don't want Dazzling Allen. We're on Stoic News. All right, so. I'm going to look at site settings. There's a lot of things that it knows about your application. But if you look under build and deploy, under environment, there's no variables. All right, so that's not useful. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to import the environment variables. OK, so I did it. Um, it seems to know what it's doing. Um, at this point, you might think, hey, I bet the site works now. You would be wrong because you have to do a Netlify deploy. So let's do a Netlify deploy. And then we're going to deploy it to prod because it's a demo. But of course, you would never do that in the real world. Oh, I didn't build it. Build it first. All right, let's check and see if we have any checks. Oh, bigger, please. Okay, is it? Is it? Uh, I'll do more bigger if you want. It's all good. There, that's very big. <laughs> all right, so it's going to take a little time to build, um, and uh, I'm going to let it do that. But um, Once we do that, um, I would, I would, I'm going to walk through the code um, very um, generally to, to show you how the co its node code um, is interfacing with the database itself. Um, but I am totally excited to hear any questions you have about what we've done so far. Um, because, um, you know, as I said, uh, our goal, uh, the developer relations team at DataStacks is to make developers successful. So, um, if, uh, if you're trying to follow along and it's not working, um, just let me know. Okay. So let's see what's happening here. It's, it's built. Now I can deploy. If you do this on your own, you will probably forget to deploy after you after you upload the environment variables, and then you'll be very sad. So just <laughs> try to remember that 
you need to um, get those environment variables not only up here so see they, they were all uploaded to um, to the settings for your your um, public uh, website but you also have to deploy after that happens even though it doesn't make sense because you didn't change any code but just trust me I am I have run into that rock many times okay so Netlify open site all right, hmm. here we go. All right, so we're no longer looking at github.io, right? We're, we're, not, we're not in the GitHub world. This is, this is, a, this is a URL I can go to um, in another browser or in another tab. Um, and it's there. So this is a public application that we have, have just, um, you know, created and deployed out to, um, out to the cloud. Um, and we did it in about 20 minutes. So, um, you know, one of my goals is to make it so that if you go to a hackathon and there's something that you might want to try with Cassandra, um, you can get that, you know, the bootstrapping done and, and have an app that you can play with, um, you know, in 15 minutes, it's, it's, it's not cool for it to take, you know, hours for you to do that. So, um, let's go back and take a look at the code, but first I'll check for more questions. Oh yes. We actually also have, um, uh, some information about what is Jamstack, which is how the code is, is, uh, separated. So let's look at that. Um, just at, at the top level. So right now um, we have source and source has pages in it. So you can imagine that home is home and upload is upload. But within those, they actually call these functions. And those are the serverless functions. Those are the little Lambda pieces that you have and they can do anything. And so what we're doing here is, um, you know, we're, 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 um, you can toggle the user from followed to unfollowed. Um, and this is all very reactive, right? We have, uh, components that we build up into, um, the pages that we want to create. So, um, so the, the actual pages are in source pages, but the functions, are in functions and they're very simple. So I'll, I'll talk about how this part works, but you can see um, we're basically taking some data and we're creating new posts with it. Um, and uh, the function always will return as, as a HTTP um, uh, objects with status codes and, uh, and body if there is a body. Um, so um, it's actually kind of fun to have something that works and then you can you can break it and then you can fix it and see um, what's happening. So um, let's go back to the readme and take a look at some of the code. So we have different libraries for different languages. Unfortunately, um, not all of them have real libraries. A lot of them have drivers, but um, we're trying to get more libraries for, for instance, uh, Python. But what we do have is for node.js, uh, we have um, a collections library, which uses the document API, and uh, REST, which uses the REST or GraphQL API. The difference there is that collections, the document API, no schema is required. You're just going to throw JSON um, objects in there and then you can retrieve them or change them. And it's all based on the contents of those JSON documents. So if it's a heavily nested thing, um, you can still, you can search all the way down, you know, it can say where, you know, the first name is Fred and they live in Seattle or whatever. It's all fine. Um, so, so to create a client, we just uh, get the AstroJS collections. We're going to pass in three of those things that are in our M file. Uh-oh. Ah. All right. Um, and 
uh, the, the ID. So the ID is your database ID. It's, it's um, if we go back to Astra and look at TikTok DB, TikTok workshop, workshop DB. So we have a cluster ID that um, is the, the ID that we're using. That is unique to you and this instance. Um, nobody else is going to have that cluster ID. That cluster ID is just for your, this specific um, database. And then you can see we have key spaces, TikTok key space, right? So, um, that's the um, the database ID. This is the region, and here's the key space. So let's look again at the um, at the things that we require. We require that DB ID, the region, and uh, we also need the, the the token that we added in. So see if you if you're if you're a Node.js nerd like I am. Um, I, this is just lovely. <laughs> this is how I want to interact with things. I want to feel like I'm doing nody things with nody stuff. So um, here we're creating a namespace um, the uh, of TikTok posts. Um, so uh, if you don't understand uh, the idea of a key space, um, it, it um, it's basically uh, at the level where most other databases would call it a database. It's where you stick your tables. And if you have a collection, um, it's not tables. It's the it's the collection of documents that it has. But um, so you can have one database with several different key spaces for several different applications. Um, that's totally cool. Um, anyways, so. Uh, we've got the collection. How are we doing on time? Um, looks like we have used 30 minutes. Okay, so um, we're going to create. Um, so first we're going to grab the Git collection. If you're not familiar with the newer promise stuff, um, await and async are, are super fun, um, but sometimes frustrating, just like all of the promise stuff is. But um, Git collection needs to make a call on the back end. To um, to grab that uh, the information about that collection. So we're going to wait for that to come back before we go on. Um, and now we're going to create. And you know this is this is uh, this is very cruddy, right? <laughs> um, we got users.create ID and then um, the information that was was passed in, and then we return the status code uh, as we should. Again, you know, I'm going to update the thing with this ID with this data. Okay. And um, I'm going to show you in a second a different way of interacting with, um, with the database to get an idea of how the actual um, REST objects work. Um, actually, I can, okay, we're going to. We're going to look more at the, at the APIs because I feel like we're not quite covering the APIs as well as we should. So I will I will fix that. Um, let's open recent. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Um, it's it it is that one. And all of my stuff, anything I show, it's in open source. It's in GitHub. You just go crazy. It's fine. Um, okay, so I'm going to do an npm install. Oh, it's already installed. Let's just go for um, hmm, Netlify dev. Hmm. All right. Well, maybe that won't work. I was I was gonna be I was gonna be clever and show you stuff, but uh, it doesn't want to work right now. So I'll be able to go back. 
to the GitHub repository. But if you uh, are interested in uh, looking at how um, the um, interactions work with the the, the various REST endpoints, and you want to kind of get the code out of the way so that you can use it um, uh, more appropriately. I have a Catacoda. I will give you a warning, which is that I'm going to make this right. Um, oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to make it right by the end of the day. It's got a few things that don't work fantastically well, but I wonder if it's still, ooh, is it still listening? Oh, it is. Okay, so um, this scenario, I don't know if you're familiar with Katakota scenarios, but um, basically if you follow the instructions here, you'll get a token, um, you'll set up your credentials, um, you'll be able to make calls, very simple calls, right? So I, I did, this is the call, HTTP colon rest v1 keyspaces. Right, super simple. Um, we want to get it out of your way. We don't want you to have to tell it. Um, and then I need you to set this header. And then, so the HTTP actually does all that for you. Um, We'll put it in remote, verbose mode. Okay, so um, in order to make a call to our API, you basically have to create, a, use your because the token, that thing that that we copied in, right? Um, create a unique request ID so that you can find it later in the logs. Um, tell it to use a host, and the host is actually, if you look, Astra ID is the first part of it, and then there's a dash. And then it's US West 2 and then dot apps dot astro dot data sacks dot com. Clearly something you don't want to do manually, something that um, computers are good at automating. So um, let me see if we have any questions. You can ask questions, Ash. Hey, let's let's uh let's check out how the uh, let's go to the app and see if we can upload something. Although I don't know that I have anything to upload. Um, so remember I said there was home.js and then there was upload. So this should work. Oh no. no. Let's take a look at the code and see why that didn't work. All right, so. No, the top. Oh, because it's in GitHub, that's why. Okay, let's take a look. Because we want it to work for sure. So when you have a, a um, Jamstack item, then you're going to have an index.js, which is where you're going to um, where you're going to start. So it does say slash upload is component upload, but I did take out that extra hashtag and maybe it really wants it. So it does. So now, you know, I can, um, I can add a video, um, if I wanted to, um, into the system. So let's, let's, uh, let's go to YouTube and grab something. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, now that's really long. Um, yeah, well, let's, let's see. Can we copy this? Okay. Let me see what we got. Hmm, looks like it didn't actually work. All right, well, I have seen. 
So I did, so as you can see, it did a URL Netlify functions add and it was posting. Um, it got, gave me a 200. I wonder. Ah, yes, it did upload. So this is my, um, I'm like, I, I didn't have a, a thumbnail, so, but it's, but it's there. So, um, so that's kind of how the interaction works with that. Okay, let's see. I'm going back to where we are. All right. Um, so it's, it's just about four now and we have time to take a few questions. Um, if you're not familiar with Cassandra, um, raise your hand in the chat if you want. Um, I talked to, uh, Ash talked about it yesterday and I talked about it a little bit earlier today, um, trying to explain um, the database itself. But um, a lot of people think, um, for instance, that all NoSQL databases have no schema, right? But NoSQL databases, um, it, it, there's SQL databases and then there's everything else. So some of them want schemas, some of them allow you to um, ask ad hoc queries um, like Mongo, um, CouchDB doesn't. Um, they all have different methods of interacting and there are advantages and disadvantages to each. Um, Cassandra, when it's uh, configured the way uh, most large companies configure it, um, the data is actually um, organized. The the um, the tables are organized by expected query instead of organizing them um, by uh, their relational uh, data model. So instead of having you know users and then another table with cities, what you have is you have users by city, right? and you can ask specific questions of that. Um, Cassandra does um, expect that you will have some duplication of data in the database. Um, that's how we get past um, the, the uh, that's how we keep the transaction time low. And ideally, you're only going to ask one question of one table and then you'll get it back um, um, very quickly. So um, we do have a lot of uh, workshops on our site about uh, Cassandra, using Cassandra and using um, uh, data stacks. Um, let's see. There. Um, and um, we have free workshops every week. So this is actually one of the workshops that we have every week, but um, usually two hours and we're able to be a lot more interactive because we present them live on YouTube. We have two presenters and we have some other people in the background answering questions in the YouTube chat, as well as keeping an eye on our Discord server so that we can help people get through the content. But, you know, we have intro to NoSQL databases. We have, um, you know, crash course on Cassandra. Um, we have a, uh, um, a Cassandra um, Datastacks Academy series, which you can take those and then you can actually get a certificate which demonstrates that you understand Cassandra. And given that um, Cassandra is, is the most popular database among the um, Fortune 100 companies uh, because of that transaction speed and um, the zero downtime, and I mean, you know, we all know what happens when AWS goes down. We don't get to watch Netflix anymore. Um, we don't want to be that guy that, that made Netflix stop working. So um, we, uh, I, I encourage you to check out um, datastacks.com slash devs um, has, has information. We have a Discord server, as I said. Um, we tend to keep an eye on it pretty regularly. So if there's questions, we can, we can help you um, with whatever you're trying to do. So, all right, well, hopefully um, this has been uh, entertaining for you. And um, I would, if you do actually um, create your own TikTok clone um, 
and you point it to us, uh, I can see if we can get you a badge for that. Um, the same as the one the TikTok clone workshop gives. So, anyway, so I, uh, if there's no questions, I think we're good. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I, I, uh, I've always loved APIs, and I, I, I'm very excited to share this stuff with you.